One of the most common questions I get is what's the number one takedown? What's the best takedown in grappling? If you're a BJJ guy, it's kind of like asking what's the best way to pass? If you're a striker, it's kind of like being asked what's the best punch? It's a hard question. You need two, three, four ways to create offense and then circling between those offenses generally opens one of them up. But if I had a gun to my head, absolutely had to answer, no bullshit, it would be the single leg, okay? Why the single leg? The single leg narrows the fight down to a very small corridor. You're using your entire body to attack one of your opponent's appendages. So it's not only effective in attacking a smaller or same size opponent, but a larger opponent. It's a technique that's largely dependent upon leverage and positioning and angles and has less to do with power. It does take a little longer to learn. It's not as accessible as our double legs. That's why I prioritize our double legs. They teach you how to cover distance and a quicker way. So then when you go to learn the single leg, it's more easily absorbed. So if I'm facing a larger opponent, this is the real utility of the single leg. If I'm up against a larger opponent and I'm planning on hitting a double leg, it's highly unlikely that I'm going to be able to, if I'm an inexperienced grappler, that it's highly unlikely I'm going to be able to power through his size, okay? There's a great size and power disparity. So using a power and explosive dependent offense is a, is a bad idea. That's why I favor the single leg. That's why the single leg has such great utility because it will cover and be effective against nearly the most effective takedown against every one of your opponents. It, our lead leg is dependent upon our opponent's lead leg. So if Ray has his left foot forward, that means my right foot has to be forward for my entry to be successful, okay? It'd be the opposite. We were the other way, but for display purposes, we'll be here. I'm gonna use the same setup we've been using, the reach setup. Reach setup is hyper important when you're going against a larger opponent. He has big, strong arms. I don't wanna to have to deal with them. I don't wanna to have to touch them. So I'm going to clear them out of the way on my entry by reaching, retract my elbows, and step behind his lead leg. I want my post underneath me. I can be at his foot, behind his foot. I can even be in slightly in front of his foot, but realize that my hands then are gonna be over top of my base, okay? Extended out. I want my post underneath me, that's ideal. My lead hand swings underneath. My trail hand collapses into a gable grip right underneath. I keep my grip at his knee. I lace my shoulder over the top right in the crook of his hip, right where his femur meets his hip, okay? This is one of the most common mistakes you're gonna see BJJ guys make. They overcommit, they go elbow to elbow here. Now look, see where my head position is? He can easily stuff my head here and start to sprawl, making life really hard on me. I, my head position will never get the length it needs if I go elbow to, or hand to elbow. I go gable grip, look how much length that gives me in my shoulder. It can reach up to the far to his hip. I do not stack my grip right underneath my shoulder and pinch the leg. I want to extend down the teeter-totter. Extend down, creating leverage here. See how my base is underneath me? He's carrying all my weight right here. I can hang out here all day. There's very little weight on my legs. I'm focusing all my weight into the top of his femur, right here. My head is up and my shoulders are shrugged, avoiding guillotines and bulldog chokes. If my head is up, if my structure is in place, my hand structure and shoulder structure, my neck will be safe. Okay, I'm keeping my grip nice and tight. My elbows are not flared. They're pulled into my ribs tight. I make this leg a part of me. I'm pulling my grip in. I'm cinching everything in tight and keeping my shoulder laced over top. This creates a very tight base. Now he has to adhere to my body weight. When I sag my weight, see him go down, he's gonna have to come down with me. I take one teeny tiny step forward left leg or trail leg. One teeny tiny step backwards with my inside leg, right leg. And then I sit him down to his foot. So again, on my entry, I reach, retract, step deep, aiming to get behind his heel or at least at his foot. Hand wraps around to the knee, lace over top. Stay close, we do not hang out here. Okay, this is a transitory position. You wanna spend as little time here as possible. So many BJJ practitioners get in here and they, they even close their legs. This only cements the position. This is, not, this is not a position we hang out in, okay? I'm only here so I can, I want to enter in with my structure already set. So, I reach, I enter my structure set. Now I just have to step, 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 and it's like he's riding on a little slide, okay? It's like there's a little 
45 degree slide, 45 degree angle, sloping down to the ground, where I'm going to step, step, pressure down and back. Human beings aren't that good at walking backwards, especially on one leg. Okay, so I get him on one leg, and then I'm going to make him move backwards with pressure moving down to here. And I also like to slide out to the ankle, right? So after I whip him down, I release my grip and slide out to the ankle. I want to keep, I want to keep a hand on him. I want to stay connected here, okay? If I let go of him, he has a chance to face up, get his feet underneath him. So I keep a foot. If this is a, a fight, he has a chance to up kick, okay? If this is BJJ, he has a chance to try and pull guard. So I keep a foot, I keep my hand on his ankle, slide it out to here, and then you can lift and enter any way you want. You have options here, but keep a hand on him. One more time. And enter with force. Enter with force here, okay? Your shoulder needs to knock him back. You're aiming for the crook of his hip where his femur meets his hip. Enter right here. See, I get him knocked back on this foot. Even if he's a big guy, I'm attacking him at a center of gravity with a very acute point in my shoulder here. Another thing is, is when guys go hand to elbow, they distribute that pressure over a large area of their chest, okay? That's not an acute point of pressure. I'm distributing that all, all throughout his leg. Especially if he's a big guy, I need to make all of my weight count. All of my pressure count. Meaning my shoulder will be much more useful than my chest. Everything's pulled in tight, my head is up. This is not good head position, okay guys? This is good head position. And do you see how my shoulders are tilted? That gives me even more length to my arm. If my shoulders are parallel to the mat, you see how this arm gets shorter? And now my shoulder's never gonna get to where it needs to go. So many BJJ guys do this. They hold onto the leg and they just stand here like this, or like this. How do you expect to take anybody down? You need to, create, you need to give them a reason to go down. You need to give them pressure on his leg to go down. Lace that shoulder over top. Pull that knee in. Step, step. Sit down. Slide out to the ankle. That's good. Yep. 